Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. So before I go to the talk, I wish to thank Professor and Head Nanoscience Tamil Nadu Agricultural University for being kind enough to introduce me to the forum. And I extend my thanks to Vice Chancellor Tamil Nadu Agricultural University and Dean PGS Tamil Nadu Agricultural University. And uh, like briefly, I was able to interact with the members of uh, Divya Bharati, Dr. Rajkumar sir, and uh, I think the other member is uh, Dr. Swarna Priya madam. So I thank you all for having me and uh, uh, sharing your time to listen to our talk. And uh, I have to extend my like uh, what uh, profound gratitude to Dr. Lakshman sir, uh, who has always been a sting or like thread uh, to connect me with Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. Since I left uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University in 2010, I left. Uh, and after I left uh, from there, uh, I got the first invitation in 2021 from TNIU and uh, that was an initiative by uh, Dr. Lakshman sir. And uh, it's a pleasant memory or green memory which uh, like uh, always stays in the mind uh, because home ground is home ground. And uh, I have always been inspired and motivated by his style and his recent style to start nanovention. It's a benchmark for me and all youngsters uh, to step into uh, risky and also new ventions. Okay, with this, I start my talk, role of nano in sustainable agriculture. So this is the topic I have given. So let's make it uh, more like an interaction because uh, see, uh, I, I'm, I'm just your uh, senior and uh, my previous uh, two invitations in 2021 and 22 were from directorate. So it would have been little formal. So now uh, it's more like a senior giving to the department a talk. So you can be informal, you can just ask and what about the career, what about the uh, like uh, research, what about the fun, everything you can ask wherever you feel like, okay, uh, don't make it as formal uh, talk. Uh, is the voice audible clear? May I hear from, from someone? Talk like uh, it's uh, my uh, duty to acknowledge the people who like who have built me so. First are my students and uh, these all my all are my uh, PhD students. So 10 of them work with me. So uh, they are critical. Uh, they are uh, like they enjoy the stay. They are very affectionate and uh, they are dedicated to research. They come from different part of the country. They are from Kerala in the south to uh, Himachal in the north and Rajasthan in the west to Orissa in the east. So they all combine together, they jointly explore new things and uh, they vary from different disciplines as well. They were like uh, stay from mechanical engineering to chemistry to biology, that is microbiology, biotechnology, biochemistry, entomology, all these fields they come from. And the person near to me is a postdoc working with me and like this photo has been taken some six months before he has left now. He is do, uh, pursuing his postdoc in uh, Germany now. And uh, these are my uh, like proud uh, students who has left from my lab. Uh, Sandeep Sharma, he is working as a postdoc in the uh, University of California, Riverside. And Pulkit, he has uh, chosen his way as uh, entrepreneur by himself and Kamaljit is working as a faculty in um, Chandigarh University here nearby after a short stint of a uh, postdoc in uh, Israel. And I have to thank my funding agency who have been so generous to fund us. That is uh, DBT, DST, ICAR, CERB and DRDO. 
um, finally uh, but not the least our uh, director inst he has been always supportive and uh, he invests money on our la- like uh, plan science and he motivates us he gives a very strong support and my collaborators so nanotechnology since it's a nanoscience lab i don't have to give this introduction this is a three slide that she says about the scale and this of course you know the top down top uh, bottom up approach and electrostatic stability static stability which makes the particle stable and gives new properties to the nanomaterials that is optical magnetic electrostatic electrical mechanical physical and chemical properties which have not been found before when it is in the bulk state okay it gives some new properties optical magnetic are all very interesting properties which i have discussed before so i don't want to give once again the same and uh, bore you again so these new properties of the same material which is not differing in any of uh, composition but simply because of the size change it express new optical or magnetic or electrical properties that is being used to explore or to make the life more luxury that is the nanotechnology okay now what we do in our lab so we try to use these material for protection production in the pre harvest stage and preservation processing in the post harvest stage and finally recently we have built up very nice sensing facility in our lab so in case of protection we are exploring how to use the ferron technology combined with nanotechnology to have highest efficiency and make a sustainable agriculture which we are going to discuss in detail and then comes to the production case of production fertilizer is important sometimes it is said the classical fertilizer can be given in the nano formulation and it can enhance the production that is one way where we are working on nano formulations of fertilizer and fertilizer coating with nano material that improves the efficiency by giving a slow release or targeted release and also sometimes the particle itself can act as a fertilizer because they in 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 interfere in the classical photosynthesis or other mechanism in the plant and improve the efficiency thus nano fertilizers are being explored for sustainable agriculture and then comes preservation in case of preservation we develop some like uh, films carbon based films and uh, the one that you are seeing at the bottom which is showing inst logo it is completely transparent paper and it is not polyethylene or any polymer paper it is a cellulose paper so you blend the cellulose cellulose will be the maximum composition with the other uh, polymers here we were being using uh, polyvinyl alcohol and we prepare this kind of transparent uh, material that can be used for pre- like uh, food uh, packing and other things and this in fact is having nanoparticle as well okay completely transparent in spite of being completely transparent it is having optically strong emi- emitting nanoparticles in it okay that can be used for a package that is having a sensing ability and finally comes the processing in case of processing i will be highlighting about the vitamin d enhancement or uh, Uh, fortification in the mushroom which is the only uh, vegetarian source for uh, vitamin d and this can be classically done with the uv light uh, which is an energy consuming process so here we have come up with the up conversion nano material which doesn't need any energy to be given once the material is synthesized it can be used n number of times it have the ability to use the nir radiation in the environment to convert into uv radiation that uv radiation as you can see here it will be taking the nir radiation from the environment and converting it to a high energy uv radiation by this forbidden band gaps and that uv radiation that is being released will cleave the bearing in the august uh, <coughs> precursor of vitamin d and that cleavage causes the vitamin d2 synthesis and fortification in the mushroom okay coming finally the sensing so in case of sensing we have developed some electrochemical based sensor and also chemo resistive based sensor 
the one that I'll highlight here will be a chemoresistive sensor, base sensor that we have developed with a new material and it goes to high precision for the signature molecule. Of course, this has been already explored before and being reported. We have got the motivation from biosensor, bioelectronics paper, I'm sorry, sensors and activators paper that has been published from Italian group. So they have been using existing uh, gas sensors that is precisely for ethylene, CO2 and others that they have combined together into a single array and they were able to detect the stress in the plant. So the same we have taken to the next step by going for the signature molecule with specific material and that will be giving signal for those signature molecule and we are trying to detect some of the pest and disease infestation in the crop at the early stage so that like uh, the protection can be taken in the early stage to avoid excessive use of the protection chemicals okay coming to the fertilizer so there are macro micronutrient micro like uh, to start with we started with the micronutrient which is uh, iron is one of the important micronutrient and iron if you see the problem like uh, these are all the like uh, it is an important element in photosystem. One, two, chlorosis can happen at the de deficiency and uh, over one million death annually happens. It is called a silent uh, killer. Okay. So one million death happens in the human system and why we have to worry about the plant system? Only if the plant system is good and it is sufficient with iron, it will be able to give the element uh, to the human being and uh, agriculture system being the primary system for the feeding of human. Okay, so now we have to improve the iron content in the plant. How to improve the iron content in the plant? Okay, the classical fertilizer uh, say for example FeSO4, whatever is being applied to the soil immediately goes into oxy hydroxy forms that is being given here. Okay, and first of all, before being applying also, iron is one among the top 10 elements that is present in the soil. So we in fact don't have to add iron to the soil because already it is so much and it is a micronutrient that is uh, like needed to the plant in a least amount. But the problem is because of the carbonate, bicarbonate ion in the soil, all the iron that is being applied will be converted into oxy hydroxy forms, which is completely bio unavailable form. And it can be available only at a pH of three or less than three, which is not the feasible condition for the root to exist. Okay. So then what we did, we started seeing what is the mechanism in which the plant will be able to take iron. Okay, broadly plants are classified into strategy one and strategy two plants based on the iron uptake. In case of strategy one, it covers all the plant except the grass species that is existing globally. So strategy one takes with three major steps. First one is protonation and then reduction and the reduced one will be up to okay so these are all the three rate limiting factors okay so the other way is by uh, strategy two plant is through the central force so basically we have to give the iron in the ionic form feso4 okay so all these uh, chelates are there chelates there are once again they are very they are very unstable and even if there is you are going for some complex stable chelates that will be mobilizing the heavy metals that is in the soil that will be even more dangerous okay so now comes our design so what we have did is we made this mesoporous silica which most of you may be familiar with because you are all audience from nanoscience so this mesoporous silica will have huge amount of porous area okay it, uh, take a thread and uh, make a like uh, rotate it with your fingers and that will make it a ball, right? So that is how it is in the nano size, okay? So it has pores of a two to five nanometer range that is running into tunneling into the silica, okay? Spinning into the silica. So basically it is having high surface area. One gram of material practically will be having 700 to 1000 meter square of area. So this can be loaded with FeSO4. FeSO4 in the schematic is given in the green color. And after coating it, we like 
uh, want the ketosine on it. Okay, ketosine for what purpose? Ketosine here does two function. Okay, one is when carbonate bicarbonate ion comes, it will collapse and it will close the pores. Okay, other side when the root comes nearby, the root itself have the inherent ability to protonate around the root, which is called root cylinder. That is just three to five mm around the root. Okay, around the root, the pH can be reduced with the protonation, and it cannot go up to less than three pH, which is not feasible for the root to exist. Okay. So, if, say for example, your uh, soil pH is neutral, some 7 or 6, it can go to up to 4. Okay. At that 4 pH, this ketosine can open. The oxyhydroxy form of iron cannot be released, but this ketosine can open, swell and open and then release. So, this is how a targeted iron application to the plant has been demonstrated by us. Okay. So you are keeping all these material around and the meaning when the materials are around and the root goes and say for example in this material where the root is overlapping will get open like this. Okay, whereas the other material that is away from the root since because of uh, the ketosine coating it will be staying stable because it will not allow the carbonate bicarbonate ions to uh, penetrate inside the mesoporous silica and convert the iron into oxyhydroxy forms, which is unavailable for the plant. Okay. So when uh, the next new root comes, then again it opens. Okay. So it stays stable and whenever the root comes, it opens and releases, thus targeted release of the nutrient happens. Okay. This is about the synthesis and the mesoporous silica has been synthesized with the micelles. The micelle formed an arrangement like this and the arrangement will be assembling like this and assemb af after assembling, once you add this TEOS, which is a very active chemical, TEOS, which is a very active chemical precursor of silica, once the moment you add it into the solvent, that is water, it immediately hydrolyzes and it forms silica. Silica is nothing but soil. Okay, soil is a component of silica. Okay, major component of soil is made of silica. Okay, so it forms a skeleton around the measles like this, and then you put it in the oven, and uh, all these measles that is uh, giving a soft template to for the sporous structure to be formed will escape out, and then you get this porous silicon. Coming next. This is the characterization. It shows the tunneling structure that it has. And how do we code this? I mean, first, how do we load the FeSO4 into it? Okay. Most of the silica loading that has been shown before we have attempted is all with this liquid formulation. Okay. They give the saturated solution and they allow the tunnels to be filled. Okay. Here, what we have did is we took the saturated solution of FeSO4 and then we applied low pressure with a little bit of heating so that the solvent that is basically the water that evaporates while evaporation, the filled in gaps here will get diffused in by the salt that is being crystallizing that gets loaded inside and then you keep it on this uh, ketosine gel. Okay, this is a gel matrix that we have optimized over which you keep the salt that is loaded with the FeSO4. I mean, mesoporous silica loaded with FeSO4 and you spin it. Once you spin it, you get a lower dirty white color and then a dark brown color and then the gel uh, remaining. Okay, so this is the FeSO4 that is not being loaded into the mesoporous silica and this dirty one that when you <coughs> tone it and see it in the TEM, you can sign, you can find a nice 13 to 16 nanometer coating of ketosine around it and loaded with FeSO4 silica. Okay, now we have to show that it is showing a targeted release. Okay, so we check the release kinetics with the pH 5 and pH 7 and we were able to see that at pH 6 there is a more release and uh, when it is coated with ketosine, it, it is showing controlled release when compared to uncoated uh, silica material okay and the same has been demonstrated with the growth medium 
and in the growth medium as well the ph5 is showing an increased release which shows that there is a targeted release happening compared to ph7 so when the root is nearby at uh, around acidic protonation of the root zone it will be releasing more and now the next question is whether the designed material is able to be stable and withstand the FeSO4 as such in spite of the carbonate bicarbonate. Okay, so we added saturated carbonate bicarbonate solution uh, into the kerosene loaded uh, kerosene coated material and then keep it for overnight and then we use this DTPA extract. Okay, this is a classical soil science method that will show the available iron in the material. Okay. So once we extract it, we were able to see that three times of increase in the available iron is there when coated material is used. Okay. Now the next one is whether we may, like these material are having very good binding with the root. Okay, the kerosene is having positively charged uh, surface, so obviously it is expected to have more binding on the root. That is how we show that there is a more binding on the root, and so more uh, concentration of the iron in the root is happening okay and finally ferric chelate reductase fcr okay this is expressed in the root when the root is in uh, fe negative solution okay so we keep the root in fe negative solution growth medium for uh, like 20 30 days so that it uh, the ferric chelate reductase happens okay and then we expose the root to all different uh, composite of the material feso4 feso4 loaded in mesoprosilica that is coated with uh, ketosine and then control okay and here we were able to see that at ph5 incubation there is a very less expression of ferric chelate reductase okay thus we prove that our material is targeted uh, to the root to release iron and feed the iron to the crop. Now coming to the urea macronutrients. So here uh, we understand that carriers may not be suitable. Of course, now uh, there are uh, new inventions that in the foliar uh, way of root the urea can be applied with nano carriers and uh, it can be efficient enough as like the examples are uh, the master stroke by uh, ifco whatever may be the technology that comes for the foliar application there is need for soil application as well okay in case of soil application we cannot forget about the pellets okay so we have we are continuously working on pellet coating with the nano material that will be a sustainable or uh, biomaterial that is being coated to give a sustainable release and uh, nitrogen use efficiency improvement okay and uh, this is to highlight about the uh, urea that is needed globally per annum and what is the subsidy that our country is spending on the fertilizer and in which the line share is taken by the uh, urea and the nitrogen use in efficiency is uh, targeted to be 20% by 2040 by International Fertilizer Association that is released by 2022. Okay, so one demonstration that we have taken is we have used uh, the like kind of cellulose paste uh, that was discussed in the previous uh, presentation by Divi Bharati. Okay, so here we have taken the jute waste. Okay, so jute waste have a little bit of lignin, so it itself is having a little bit of a hydrophobicity uh, compared to other cellulose material. So this jute grafted, uh, the, this jute has been taken and it has been uh, grafted with silica. Okay, so silica once again, as we have discussed in the previous demonstration, mesoporous silica where TUS is added, the moment you are adding, it coats on the soft template. Okay, see here, we are taking uh, less than five, uh, one centimeter uh, jute fibers as a template and that is being dispersed in the water and then this TUS is being added and that co covers on the jute and it forms a silica coating over it. So now what happens is uh, this silica is going to act as a glass piece to cut the jute. Okay, Otherwise, if you put in the ball mill or any mill, that will entangle and it will stop the rotation of the mill since because this is having a tough lignin fiber along with the jute okay it is not like a easily fragile uh, cotton or other uh, cellulosic material okay now this silica uh, that is coated on it is giving a 
uh, stinked to cut it by itself in the mill. Okay, once it is milled, this is the jute fiber that is having the silica coating. After coating, this is all all different characterization. Uh, so after milling, you get this kind of talc kind of powder. Okay, it's very fine powder. Okay, this fine powder has been mixed with the egg white. Okay, once it is mixed with the egg white and dispersed well and loaded into the air gun, and then this urea is taken into the rot uh, like uh, uh, <coughs> rotary machine, and then we optimize the temperature with the air, like hair dryer, and then. We optimize the spraying speed also in such a way that like you get a nice coating, nice stable coating on the urea. Okay. So this material that is being milled has been characterized with the AFM and it shows a homogeneous uh, spherical particle that is uh, coated with, uh, I mean silica coated with the uh, uh, jute grafting. Now we have to do uh, all the protocols that is needed for the coating character. Character, okay. Basically, it should be flexible so that uh, it have the ability to uh, withstand any aberration. Okay. If it is not flexible, basically it is going to peel off or it it is going to break and then it is going to be uh, uncoated fertilizer in over time of storage okay so first we check this flexibility with the Young's modulus we are able to see that the coating material is having a good Young's modulus when compared to all the composites uh, that is being added to the uh, coating material individually Okay. And then the coated material has been checked for the water contact angle and uh, 150 and above are considered to be the super hydrophobic material and we are almost like, decent enough to reach 150 range that is giving 144 as a coating material uh, contact angle. Okay. And then the contact angle has been defended with the AFM and other uh, roughness measurement and we were able to say that like one, the, since the roughness is lesser, it is giving high hydrophobicity with the coating material and uh, the FTI characterization once again. Okay, And this shows that with the increase in the amount of coating material here, for example, 14% is the coating material uh, like uh, with reference to the urea that is taken and 9% and then 4% as the proportional decrease in the coating material is happening proportional decrease in the thickness is happening okay now uh, with these three coating material that is being developed uh, with uh, different coating strength we were checking what is the aberration and uh, we were able to see that coating material with four percent and nine percent is able to overcome the aberration that is given through the zirconia milling Okay, whereas the 14 percent, which is so thick that is uh, fragile and it is showing almost uh, uh, fragility as compared to the control that is also being broken with these disturbance, aberration disturbance that is given uh, at the lab scale. And the penetration distance that is being done with the penetrometer, we were able to see that all the four or three coatings are able to uh, withstand the penetration. So basically it is uh, stable and then now the humidity resistance has been checked by keeping the coated material in different uh, RH and uh, different RH we are able to see that uh, the liquefaction of uh, urea is not happening in uh, any of the material. Uh, except for 80% of RH, okay? 80% of RH is very rare in the environment, only in the coastal region, and that too in a very uh, sparse condition, okay? Which means all the three coating is good to withstand the RH condition also. Now the coating has been uh, checked for the release kinetics and the release kinetics shows that there is a decent amount of uh, control in 14% uh, and 9% and if you could remember in the aberration only 9% uh, and 4% was good and here in the release 14% and 9% is good so which means we have to choose 9% uh, uh, as for the next studies because that is giving both aberration ca control as well as the leaching control. And volatilization uh, loss has been measured with our own customized uh, facility uh, that I'll be discussing when we discuss about the sensors. And uh, we check this uh, in the production efficiency with different dosage. And we were able to see that there is a good in improvement, like 20% improvement in the yield uh, when compared to the conventional for, I mean, like uncoated fertilizer that is being uh, used for reference. 
Okay, the next one is about the starch uh, that we have used since because there was a little criticism that uh, why we are using, although it is a biomaterial albumin which is giving a stable uh, like a coating, uh, there was criticism that like uh, it is a what animal protein and there should be some substitute from the plant source or uh, widely available source okay and starch is one like a viscous source and it gives a like kind of uh, what mm, kind of uh, hydrophobic surface as well uh, compared to the cellulose so we thought like why 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 don't we mimic make the starch to mimic this uh, previous structure that is albumin albumin is basically having high phosphate content okay so we modified the starch with the phosphate and uh, here of course there are many starch coating on the urea with different uh, like uh, references as i have given this uh, l lactin uh, modification has been given to improve the hydrophobicity and rubber coating has been given and formal this is a classical chemistry that uh, people use to make the hydrophobicity in the urea and three layer coating <coughs> with the polyurethane which is uh, which comes from the uh, what is it a uh, cyanide uh, precursor okay so we want to have we want to have a replacement for all these so we propose this uh, phosphate uh, uh, modification in the starch and it went well okay recently it got uh, like uh, published in a very nice journal so <coughs> The same urea, uncoated urea is taken and phosphorylated starch is taken and with the calcium source we are able to give a stable coating and uh, this is again the same characterization and the other things uh, for the want of time let me skip all these things which is just a repetition of the previous coating and aberration permeability everything has been checked and with the change in the coating material we were able to change the thickness and uh, uh, cumulative release control and this is what happens after 45 days okay it is just simple Simple starch coating, you can see that there is a high stability. It is completely soaked in water for 45 days. There is no oh, taking and uh, keeping it back. Okay, so in 45 days, we were able to see that the material is stable. And uh, see, uh, other other uh, selling point of this material is see, uh, starch coating mostly is fragile in the soil because of the amylase. Amylase is the most abundant enzyme that is available in the soil okay so that immediately choose the starch okay so we want to show that the material is stable in that soil condition as well okay for which uh, we have challenged the material with the amylase and we were able to see that there is uh, the change in the surface morphology is less compared to the control starch and uh, one, one other important uh, application of uh, giving a silica coating on the cellulose is it will give a shape memory property for the cellulose okay so say for example you are taking cotton and you are uh, like sinking it into the water it will become a thin film okay whereas if you are coating it with the silica it will become a like a shape memory property after adding water still it will be able to keep the same uh, like uh, volume that it is occupying not same like uh, relatively same so having that into mind we have used the same jute coated with silica as a reusable uh, fertilizer matrix and uh, coming next uh, uh, it's a small introduction about the carbon carbon is a very abundant material uh, you just have to exfoliate it and then you get this uh, graphitic structure and uh, once you are exfol exfoliating and the single layer of carbon is called graphene okay L like uh, this is uh, an allotrope of uh, allotrope of uh, carbon compared to the uh, diamond based carbon that is being shown here okay basically the graphitic carbon have uh, three bonding system whereas the uh, uh, carbon carbon the diamond have sp3 that is four carbon uh, bonds okay so what i mean to say is this uh, in spite of having uh, three uh, bonds in the carbon it is a very stable material and is a very cheap material which can be explored for many agriculture application which we have explored it for uh, let me skip all these uh, introduction and uh, of course uh, we have used this carbon itself as a electron carrier in the photosynthesis uh, and we were able to see that the chlor chloroplast production uh, efficiency is improved when this uh, graphitic structure is added into it so it itself can be acting as a growth promoter that is what we have demonstrated here in this work and uh, 
coming to the protection part. Okay. We have developed uh, uh, this uh, graphitic system into a drift tolerant uh, pesticide or fungicide delivery system and which has been demonstrated like this. So basically you are tying the uh, one is you are making this graphitic 2D layer structure to stay on the leaf. Okay, once it is staying on the leaf compared to the conventional emulsions that is easily being washed, this one being a 2D layer structure is able to stay stable in the cuticle. Okay, and the other one is it is also uh, having a semiconducting property that will be helping in the uh, programmed degradation of the pesticide. So you are making the carrier to uh, stay on the leaf for a longer time. At the same time, you are giving a programmed degradation. This can be controlled by changing the composite ratio. Okay. As such, if we go without customization, it can be a controversial material because you have to extend the pesticide life. How come this degradation will be working? But if you are programming the ratio in such a way that you are giving minimum amount of pesticide stay time and also you are giving the degradation control. Okay, coming next, uh, so uh, fungicide and pesticide we have demonstrated. Now we want to use the behavioral system in the pest control. Okay, so here we have used pheromones. Let, let me skip this behavioral introduction, all these things. So we have demonstrated, we have taken the pheromone of uh, Tuta absoluta to absoluta as you all know it is one among the economically important pests and it uh, mines inside the leaf so pesticides are unless you go for a systemic pesticide it, uh, it it doesn't work well so pheromones are a good option and the problem in the pheromone is one is it is uh, uh, it quickly evaporates and goes away and what conventional carriers that is being used like these and uh, dispensers or cellulose paper or the commercial sector all have a micron size uh, pores that allows them to escape so quickly okay so what we have done is this graphitic system as i was mentioning it the graphite once you exfoliate it it becomes a single layer of graphene sheet okay but all these layer will be having high energy okay it will be very challenging task to keep it in a single layer okay they will try to come together so you exfoliate it and you immediately add the pheromones into it and you allow it to evaporate uh, i will allow the solvents to evaporate and it starts to assemble into a layer okay once it is assembling into a layer say for example here the blue one is the graphite structure and the yellow one is the uh, pheromones and so the pheromones have an extended diffusion pathway to get released so thus you increase the life of the pheromone so and uh, this has been tested for uh, this material has been tested for electroantonogram response okay so here we use the pheromone with our material and pheromone with the conventional septa and uh, this has been given as a puff to the antenna that is being connected to the electrodes and it gives a nice response as even to the conventional septa that is being used okay? and then we see what is the catch efficiency the catch efficiency of graphene oxide loaded with the pheromone is more compared to the commercially used septa and this has been uh, tested in bangalore with our icr institute in a five acre of land and uh, we are explaining some mechanism for this extension of the shelf life with the tga afm and other studies uh, sem where it shows that it is forming a what mix like structure as given in the schematic uh, this is another GVO that is having a functional group. So functional groups avoid that uh, staking of the sheets and we were able to see that there is a lesser life of this edifice and more life with this edifice 
which uh, undoubtedly says that the arrangement of these graphene oxide gives an extension of the diffusion path that leads to the uh, very good catch in the test. And finally about the sensor. Uh, so this is a typical uh, specimen of uh, bacterial built in uh, tomato. You can see that the outer stem is completely green, okay? but inside the infection is happening and the infection will start showing outer symptoms only when the uh, infection reaches about 10 to the power of 9 colonies per gram of the specimen that you're taking. Okay, so we want to develop some method for this. Already available method is about uh, ELISA. ELISA also can work only up to 10 power 6 uh, number of colonies per gram uh, should be the load for the uh, effect to be seen in the ELISA. Okay, some portable GZ are coming. So what we thought is let's uh, modify the what the traffic police uh, system that is a uh, breach system that is being developed uh, that basically uses chemoresistive metal oxide sensors okay so here for example uh, you can see that uh, the alcohol is considered as this black man he is coming and he is taking the surface oxygen away so the electron that is bound to the surface oxygen is being released once it is released it becomes more conductive and that reduces the resistance okay so the resistance change has been measured and quantified for the uh, target gas okay so here uh, we have did some uh, intensive studies with the electrode okay here we are increasing the length of the electrode by having an interdigitated electrode okay so that the sensitivity increases this is just a kind of one uh, a finger size okay electrode and uh, this is the back side of the electrode basically this one uh, shows this 200 micrometer uh, electrode that is running throughout the layer and this has been loaded with these uh, fine nanometer particle to have the sensitivity and this is our uh, sensor system globally i can say this would be the best system to give uh, ppb range of uh, uh, volatiles that you want to simulate okay and uh, we have taken iron one as a signature molecule why because once again to improve the sensitivity for example in the traffic police system where they are using alcohol alcohol will be having only one oxidation site whereas here you can say see in one iron one, there will be four oxidation sites okay so this all increases the sensitivity so thus we include the sensitivity let me skip all these mechanism and other optimization that we have done and in conclusion when you keep the plant in a controlled environment teflon bag you'll be able to see the signal okay of course this has to be optimized and standardized in a long uh, duration to get the maximum signal okay now uh, let me skip all these slides and go to the conclusion so this is how we like uh, try to uh, march towards sustainable agriculture so we develop uh, a good sensor okay and uh, we give the urea in a coated fashion and we develop pesticide uh, i mean uh, free uh, agriculture by using graphene oxide as a pheromone delivery system and this way we march towards the sustainable agriculture and uh, i do outreach as well whenever i get chance or travel i go to some rural area we try to extend uh, the nanotechnology to schools. Finally, thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Vijay Kumar. And uh, on behalf of the Center for Agriculture and Nanotechnology, it is my bound duty to thank uh, the, um, the today's presenter, the invited speaker, Dr. P.S. Vijay Kumar, scientist, Institute of Nanoscience and Technology. 
for having elaborately explained about the eco-friendly urea there is particularly jute grafted silica nano ring woven fertilizer is very interesting and it, it's known for it is controlled release of urea and also dr vijay kumar has explained about starch wall of urea for sustainable release and the porous silica bio bio fiber for sustainable fertilizer reservoir and uh, dr vijay kumar has explained about carbon nano materials particularly starting from fullerene to uh, carbon nano dots then anti drift pesticide nano sticker is also quite interesting and with uh, commendable um graphical the way in which you explained the protocol is quite interesting and also dr vijay kumar has explained about pheromones and pheromones particularly the nano maize lure and the new 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 area of uh, kind of uh, research that our students can really think of it and uh, at this juncture uh, before i conclude i would like to ask our students and scholars if we got any questions to be asked to dr vijay kumar Uh, dear students and scholars have any questions faculty okay and um, uh, the chairman of the advisory committee and my teacher lakshman sir would you like to ask anything to dr vijay kumar i think i just uh, there is only one thing i have to thank um, uh, dr vijay kumar and uh, just for the information of the house and as well as for uh, head of the dep uh, department center for agricultural nanotechnology and uh, we had a discussion myself and uh, dr vijay kumar and our honorable vice chancellor we had a discussion uh, last week and uh, madam has uh, requested vijay kumar to have a proper agreement with tnau and as well as uh, center for uh, agricultural nanotechnology so that um, more good things uh, can be possible if we align together and uh, we are planning for a one big project uh, with the help of ifco also by linking uh, uh, tnau and uh, uh, inst mohali and uh, ifco so that i think funding will flow to the uh, university and as well as uh, inst and uh, whatever the um, uh, good work initiated both at uh, um, our nanotechnology tnau and as well as in inst mohali we can commercialize that one uh, through this uh, association so i think i uh, sincerely thank um, uh, dr vijay kumar first for actually accepting to be the excellent examiner and also for accepting to align with tnau in future programs so that i think you can do a, a lot of good things to to your alma mater so uh, thank you uh, dr vijay kumar and also thanks uh, dr prashant rajan for wonderfully actually conducting this entire program and the way you conducted the entire program is so good and uh, keep it up and also thank our honorable nrm director and all uh, for the 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 patience uh, you showed throughout this uh, entire program thank you very much on on and all thank you sir uh, director natural resource management sir would you like to interact with the dr vijay kumar good afternoon uh, dr vijay kumar i just uh, heard uh, your presentation is very good uh, of course uh, it is environment is going to be a future uh, life because now the government of india is a life uh, lifestyle for environment so now every organization is going to create an awareness of the environment rather than the um, uh, food and other things so even if we want to uh, uh, that is environment should be safe more important and uh, without uh, safety whatever may be the earning and uh, production it never uh, serve the purpose of the public so in this way you are nano materials that is nano formulation and other things like urea and other things that will be going to use efficiency of the applied nutrients will be enhanced through nano material nano um, technology thereby the the leaching of the excess of the nutrients to the ground water and also the lakes and ponds it will be minimized thereby the environment pollution could be prevented thank you very much dr vijay kumar thank you thank you for your uh, presentation also for uh, uh, having the uh, discussion with our vice chancellor madam for having a continuous uh, uh, sustainability in with respect to the uh, intellectual way sustainability through uh, that, is, that is intellectual sustainability that is more important thereby the our uh, tnau and your institute have a collaborative research and other things can be done thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you so much and uh... Thank you. Thank you very uh, like much. I have to thank uh, uh, Dr. Lakshman sir for the initiative. He is the propeller for the whole uh, connection that has been made. 
so definitely uh, we are going to march uh, like very quickly on this and uh, we are going to make sir like yeah with your support and uh, of course tna you great like uh, pleasure to work with tna thank you sir thank you sir before we conclude a formal vote of thanks then i will conclude sir and on behalf of uh, the center for agriculture and nanotechnology and tamil nadu agriculture university the school of post graduate studies i thank the external examiner uh, dr p s vijay kumar scientist institute of nano science and technology punjab and the chairman of the advisory committee dr lakshman sir former dean school of post graduate studies and all other advisory committee members then proctor dr s endil uh, professor head department of crop physiology the dean school of post graduate studies our director natural resource management faculty students scholars junior research fellows senior research fellows and pg coordinator center for agriculture and technology and uh, today's presenter the student uh, dr uh, p divya bharati and thank you everyone for joining this uh, today's public defense and my special thanks to dr vijay kumar and we are suggested by lakshman sir will look for the bilateral co collaborations with the center for agriculture and nanotechnology and the institute of nano science and technology involving if course the lead team so that we'll come out with a new product and the country's major issue of um, the distributing subsidy to the farmers we can make really possible with uh, with the nano urea and we'll continue to uh, collaborate uh, and extend our fullest support from the uh, center for agriculture and nanotechnology tamil nadu agriculture university thank you very much thank you everyone for joining so shall i close the session sir yes you can close the session thank you very much the session is closed